Greetings and welcome back carnivores to Carnivore Confidential. I'm Dougie the Butcher. Um, today I've got a brief little DIY for you, for you lamb lovers. Um, I picked up a lamb saddle from my buddy the Billy the Butcher. I'm Dougie the Butcher, he's Billy the Butcher. Um, and I'll show you a picture of him and I from like 35 years ago when we were just kids getting it started in this business. Anyway, I picked up a lamb, lamb saddle from Billy. Um, and I'm going to take the bones off it and then tie it back together and show you how to get a beautiful little uh, boneless lamb loin roast with the tenderloin still uh, attached to the inside. Um, easy to cook, excuse me, easy to cook, just uh, I would say, I like my lamb pink, so I would say 375 a pound uh, at three, sorry, 375 at 20 minutes a pound for medium. Just rub it down with some olive oil, lay some rosemary sprigs across the top. Bake it off at, uh, like I said, 375 uh, for 20 minutes a pound. Um, and uh, you should have a nice pink lamb, boneless lamb loin roast. Beautiful, come on back for that. All right, so I realize that this is my pork chart, but it, I don't have one for lamb, but I just wanted to show you where the lamb saddle comes from. And it comes from this area right here. Damn, shaky hands. It comes from this area right here on the uh, lamb carcass. So um, that prefaces what I'm about to show you upstairs. All right, welcome back, peeps. Like I said, downstairs, I've got a little treat for you today. I picked up a lamb saddle, like I said, from my buddy Billy the Butcher. Um, and basically a lamb saddle is just this portion of the back right before you get to the sirloin section and before you get to the rib section this section right here is just the saddle or the loin double loin actually because there's you can see that would be it that would be a t-bone right you can see the tenderloin the bone and the uh, feather bones and the loin muscle this is attached two sides like this like i said on the back goes right there and um, today I'm going to show you something that you can easily do at home. Okay, like I said, I'm just going to, um, you can easily do this at home. What we're going to do today, let me roll up my sleeves. What we're going to do today is I'm going to take the bones off of this and, th and then just tie the tenderloin and the loin sections back together uh, to make a nice little boneless roast. And uh, I'll show you just how easy that is to do. I'm going to dry it off here once we open it up. Comes all the way from New Zealand, so the plastic bag is tough. There we go. And of course, I didn't break the vacuum seal, so we got to do it again. There we go. All right, and Mama, Mama, you can hear me open a bag of cheese from across the opposite side of the house, behind three closed doors, and yet. You ignore me when I call your name. Typical. Okay, it wasn't as wet as I thought it would be, or was. And uh, there we go. All right, so one lamb saddle. Again, I'm gonna show you just how easy this is to do. This is, this is the tenderloin on this side, and this side, you can see them. Tenderloin, 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 tenderloin. Spine right here. So we're going to go down on either side of the spine and release the tenderloin. But I don't really, I'm going to try hard not to take it all off. And I'm, same on both sides. Just hugging the spine right down to the feather bones. And you can hear me go across them right there. All right, now on the back, you can see this is the back right here. We're gonna go down, straight down the feather bones on either side. Moderate, pre <clears throat> pardon me, moderate pressure on your knife. And then we're just gonna release the loin muscle off of the, bones. Should really be wearing my glove for this. 
but I've done this enough times. Okay. So I'm just feeling for the end of that bone right there. You see the bone right here? See this bone right here? I'm feeling for the end of that bone with my knife. And we're going to just hopefully go right around it without going through it. And that way I'm not actually going to completely release the tenderloin from the rest of the loin. Being ever so gentle. I know this looks like it could be something that might be a little tedious to do, but it's really not. <clears throat> Pardon me. If you just, <clears throat> excuse me, if you just understand a little bit of the anatomy, it's quite easy to do this yourself. And these, hopefully I can get these off in two nice separate pieces that I can tie back together. As you can see, coming apart nicely. Just a little bit of a bone there. And there we have it. One side. Bring the tenderloin out of the way so we don't cut that off. And the other side. Now, like I said, there's the, uh, put that back in there. There's the spine, right? The spine. Uh, feather bones on top, rib bones on the bottom, or uh, riblets is what these are called. They're on the inside. This is on the top, the dorsal side. This is the ventral side on the interior side. And um, this is uh, the backbone right here. Right? Okay. Well, you know what? I said that completely back, completely wrong. This is the feather bones. These are the riblets on either side going down like this. All right. So what we have, as you can see, are two. Now I brought this up to show you as well. If you really wanted to, you could have left this hole, right? And, and, and cut it into chops. But I didn't want to do that because I wanted to have a bonus for us now. So I wanted to show you how you could do this easily yourself. So what we have here is the tendril, or the, the, the strip loin, the strip loin muscle and the tenderloin muscle, right? And I'm and then the fat on the outside. And I'm going to roll these together. See, they're still attached. Uh, thick side to thin side, like so. And I'm going to roll this into a nice little boneless roast. And um, it's easy to, uh, if you got a ball of string, you can just take a uh, cup and uh, I wouldn't normally put it on the floor, but um, that's, that's because I'm pulling it up. So I'm going to take my butcher's knot and make this nice little boneless lamb roast and it's not going to take too much to cut it or to tie it rather because it's really not that big so I figure probably a string in the middle string on each end and one more in the center on each side. And of course, I'm always forgetting something. And as I look up, I realize that I didn't turn my lights on, but it is midday. I have my overhead lights on. I hope I'm praying that that's enough. I apologize again. I'm always forgetting something, but there we have it. A boneless loin lamb roast with the tenderloins still attached. Bon appetit. Cook this off in your oven at, uh, I like my lamb pink, so I would say 20 minutes a pound for a 375 degree oven. Um, you can wrap it in some rosemary or put some rosemary on it, make some, uh, make a, a dust, a, 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 douse it in olive oil, lay some fresh rosemary on it, salt, pepper, roast it off. Bon appetit. I hope you like what you see, folks. Stay hungry. Please like and subscribe to my new channel. 
Um, it means the world to me. It means the world to me. And uh, come on back next Thursday for another... Uh, hi, baby. You can smell it, can't you? Come on back next Thursday at 6 o'clock for another uh, upload. Thanks very much for dropping by and stay hungry, you guys. All right, so this is my buddy, Bill. Say hey. <laughs> this is uh, his shop. Beautiful shop. And uh, used to work together years ago. I actually want to see something funny. There's a picture way up there on the wall of Billy and I from 30 years ago. At least, how old is that? 35 years ago. 35 years ago. Wow. All right, so he's cutting me uh, a beautiful uh, Wagyu steak here. Little segue. All right, I'm gonna have to come. I'm gonna have to. So you want something like that, dude? A little bigger, buddy. Like that? Yep. Oh my God, look at that. That is gorgeous. All right. My hands are really shaky, so I'm gonna call this quits. Thank you, William. No problem.